Hi viewers, uh, this is my very first video on uh, A-Level tutorials. Um, I'm firstly going to begin with um, a chemistry topic which seems to confuse quite a few people. Um, I'm currently studying at A-Level and uh, I thought as many people often look on YouTube for uh, tutorials to help explain certain areas of their subject. Um, they can find it very useful so I was wondering what people might, might think about my videos and if there's any sort of tips to make them more helpful for people. But anyway, to begin with um, I'm going to look at, as you can obviously uh, see, arenes and in particular benzene. Um, this is the typical sort of diagram to represent benzene. Um, I also have a full structural uh, formula to represent it. Um, right. First, first of all, what we've got is we've got carbon atoms in a ring, and each carbon atom is bonded to two carbon atoms and a hydrogen atom. And because there are three areas of electron density around each atom, we get this angle of 120 degrees. This question does come up quite a lot on um, both OCRA and OCRB salters. Um, it's key to remember we've got the three areas of electron density. And another question which does come up quite a lot is explaining what the rings are within the centre. These are in fact representations of six delocalised electrons which come from each carbon atom within the ring. Um, we represent this in a um, particular way which uh, I'll show you in a second. But yeah the key thing is to remember that the six delocalised electrons come from the uh, carbon atoms. Um, these are the key points which you have to remember about about benzene. Um, we also, you also need to know that the delocalised electrons arrange themselves above and below the hexagonal plane of the molecule. Uh, I will show you a diagram in a minute to uh, help you understand that. Right, as, uh, as I was saying, this is very very simple sort of representation of um, benzene from a sort of side on view but it's I found personally it's, as soon as you understand this it's extremely easy to explain how the electrons arrange themselves first of all the black line going through the center that is the that's just the flat structure of uh, benzene um, and what we call it is we call it the hexagonal plane due to the six carbons creating a hexagonal shape and then we've got Above and below the uh, plane, we've got areas of high electron density, and these are where the these areas, sorry, are where the delocalized electrons um, stay about the ring, and it, that is essentially what the ring in the um, structure which I showed earlier represents, um, and it is a very stable molecule. However, the uh, structure of benzene has um, historically had many theories about the uh, structure. Um, this is the uh, modern representation which I've just been talking about but uh, in 1865 a man called Kekule was, um, he was trying to figure out the structure and um, he, he conveniently dreamt that about a snake biting its own tail and um, this gave him the idea of having alternating single and double bonds in a structure. But as um, modern methods have um, gone on, this structure just does not fit one key element. Um, here's a past paper question which comes up time and time again. We've got electron diffraction data shows that a benzene molecule has a hexagonal shape the bond angle of 120 degrees and all of the bond lengths are equal and the question asks you to explain how the structure that Kekulé proposed accounts for some of the evidence but not all of the uh, electron diffraction data 
Right. First of all, look at the amount of marks that it's asking for. Now, what I tend to do when I attack these sort of questions, I do bullet points like this. Now, this is very, very basic. Um, it might get the marks. Um, that's what I did, and I've checked it against the mark scheme. Um, basically, what I've wrote here is very, very basic, and you need to elaborate on it a bit, like talking about electron density. Um, right. So what Kekulé structure gives us is we do get the hexagonal shape as uh, shown here and it also does account for the uh, bond angle of 120 degrees because like the um, modern one we've got carbon atoms here which have three areas, three areas of electron density, we've got the double bond, we've got the single bond and we've got the hydrogen atom coming up there. Um, but it does not account for the uh, equal bond lengths because he's put double bonds and single single bonds in the same structure and this does not work because double bonds are shorter than uh, single bonds and um, this is this causes a problem really because we wouldn't get the uh, equilateral hexagon structure that we should get and um, basically as the uh, question sort of says, the electron diffraction data tells you that the bond lengths are equal and therefore Kekulé's structure cannot represent the true structure of benzene and for that reason it just does not work. Um, I've also got an enthalpy level diagram here. One minute. Okay. This shows the sort of enthalpy uh, changes between the modern benzene representation and Kekulé structure there. And basically what we can sort of tell from this uh, enthalpy diagram is that the stabilisation energy between Kekulé structure and benzene shows us that the molecule of benzene is very very stable and it, this is backed up by uh, looking at reactions between arenes because of how stable the molecule is whereas the enthalpy of um, formation from cyclohexane is a lot bigger 360 there and only 208 to benzene this I mean th this shows that Kekulé's model was nowhere near as stable as uh, benzene and this is further evidence that um, Kekulé's model wasn't right. Finally, um, for SALTA students, this is um, this is something important that always comes up on SALTA's papers. Uh, OCRA people, um, it, it's interesting to know, so don't uh, switch off just yet. But basically, a question that always comes up on uh, SALTA's papers is asking why benzene appears colourless and uh, why other dyes with several arenes appear coloured. Uh, I will talk about coloured dyes in another video because uh, I don't think it's relevant for this one because this is explaining uh, benzene as a molecule. But the points in front will guarantee you three or four marks in a question because these are the key points that you always have to put about why benzene appears colourless and the main reason is because the top one here is it absorbs light in the ultraviolet range of the spectrum now when uh, a molecule absorbs UV uh, light uh, electrons do become excited to a higher level but the key thing which you have to remember is that the molecule then transmits wavelengths of light and UV it does not emit like in physics where um, you have quantum theory this is a key problem that students often put and you often lose all of the marks for uh, putting the mission on there the important thing is it is transmission when it absorbs light um, and the reason it appears colourless to us is because it transmits all wavelengths of visible light and it transmits a complementary colour which lies in the UV range and uh, because our eyes can't detect 
UV, uh, we can't actually detect uh, the uh, sort of colour coming off benzene, um, and that's why it appears colourless to us. Uh, and I think that's about it for benzene. Um, obviously, get revising. This is just basics, okay? This is, you know, this is last minute stuff that, you know, can help you remember key points. It's not everything, and I urge you to all go and revise, and I encourage you to do well. Best of luck. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and feel free to comment on how I, how I can improve my videos. Thank you.